already started. Joe, what's up? Uh, good to see you guys again. I'm just uh, broadcasting from Colorado. I'm actually just made this logo really fast. And again, how did I make this? First off, guys, I made this on a live stream earlier on Facebook on the Illustrator page. So make sure you hop on Facebook, uh, like uh, the Illustrator page and the Creative Cloud page there. Uh, but in general, this is... Uh, this is what I'm going to do is kind of dive into this. Oh, now I see some chat coming through from London, Chile. Oh, I've never been to Chile. Uh, Illinois. Or Illinois. Just kidding. Um, but just to show you kind of how I even made this logo, and this is kind of a uh, useful tip, especially if you're just starting out. It's hard to start out with just a blank page. But what I've actually used are the templates. So if you're uh, a CC member, you have access to all of these templates. So that's what I've used. I think I dove into print and I've used this elegant logo kit. So that's what I've actually used to create the logo are these different elements. So this is a good place to start. It's just at least without starting with a blank page, start with some of these assets and dive right in, okay? Hello from Brazil. Stuart in Colorado, buddy. Yeah, we have some snow, huh? Did you shovel yesterday? I had to shovel. So, Barcelona, Virginia, El Salvador. I want to go to El Salvador, seriously. Oh, man, Canada. You guys get me all excited about things. I got to calm down. So, again, uh, Facebook, we do live streaming. Keep that in mind. Again, what did I do? I just created this logo in Illustrator CC. Actually, earlier today. What did I do? I just saved it as Illustrator or excuse me, logo.ai, saved it to my desktop, right? It's that simple. Okay, so, uh, and uh, from there, obviously, we're gonna see it on my desktop in a second. Let me just kind of clean up some things because it's a little bit messy. You don't need to see all these other graphics, um, but uh, essentially, you could see on my desktop, here's the Illustrator file. Okay, so, you know, often a common way if you want to bring assets into Photoshop, first you can ask, you know, why would I want to do that? Well, typically it's when you're combining, you know, uh, say a logo with um, more of a photo, like a composite is why you do that. But honestly, Amy, good to see you from Toronto. I love Toronto. Like, as you guys know, Amy, Amy, Jorge, Stuart, you guys probably know you're probably using both programs. And depending on your experience level might determine what program you use or what, what app. But if I took a step back, I could say, hey, Photoshop is all about uh, creating raster images or sort of image manipulation over, uh, you know, more traditional graphic design and illustration work that you'd obviously do in Illustrator. Okay, but just to show you also in Photoshop, you have that same cap capability you know, to take this texture geometric mask, that um, template, and you have access to that. And again, this is a free asset that I can use and I can start to, um, you know, play with. All right, so again, obviously this looks, mm, yes, yeah, looks pretty uh, very graphic heavy. Let's drop in this image, you know, but typically I would use Photoshop to work on obviously photos and images, stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing right now, just kind of using a template image combined with a photo that I got from Adobe Stock. But I still want to include that logo here. <laughs> Brent, I love it, dude. If your desktop isn't messy, you're doing it wrong. I think the same thing about layer, uh, layer names. Like, if everything's too organized, you must not be busy enough, because I'm not... I don't have that kind of time to, uh, you know, again, just uh, to be able to, um, you know, keep everything so organized. So this is what people will do. It's like, okay, I'm gonna open up this Illustrator logo, right? They might bring it into, right into Photoshop, right? And they'll ask them, hey, you wanna bring this in uh, as a separate page, as in this resolution? And this really clearly illustrates uh, the difference between Illustrator and Photoshop, because it wants to take this this logo that's made up of, uh, you know, vectors and math and turn it into pixels. So that's why this clearly illustrates what's going on. I'll just click OK. And that's the worst way you want to do things. Bella, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so Illustrator is never your go-to program. It, it, you use Photoshop, but if you make Illustrator more fun, I might use it. Heck yeah, I'll make it fun. <laughs> 
So anyways, when you open, this is the wrong way to do it. And I hate showing the wrong way, but that's not you, what you need to do. And you guys know this, Rob, you know this, right? What would you do is you'd have, you'd be an illustrator. And here's another way. Check this out. I'm going to take this, this particular, um, uh, graphic copying it and go right into Photoshop and never have to look at my desktop, you know, and then paste. Watch what happens when it asks me to paste it in. Oh, Daryl, I like you said SVG. I like it. Scalable vector graphics sounds like exactly what I need. But check this out. These are my different options, right? And it depends on what you're going to want to do. Nine times out of ten, ten, you're going to want this to be a smart object. Okay, because anytime the word smart is in the term, you should probably use that selection. Okay, but again, smart object, not pixels, right? Because it's going give to give us all those little dots, not a path. Potentially a sla shape layer, but that's the second option that I'd ever pick. Smart object, boom, right? And I'll cover this in a second, but I'm going to uncheck that because I don't want to make it confusing. But I am going to add it to a library. So a smart object, that's what I'm going to do. Click OK. Bop. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, handy. Right there in the center. You know, something like that. Yes, Ryan, good point. So smart objects typically accept when you want to apply certain effects and you're already a step ahead of me. But as you guys know, and I'll just kind of delete all these other layers just to simplify this whole thing, right? But, um, you know, here's my, what is this called? Oh, it's a vector smart object. Oh, what is it giving me? It says, hey, you know what? I'm actually linked back to Illustrator. I'm a smart object, as you guys know. So, or you don't know, because quite frankly, that's why you're here is to learn. Double click, what happens? Bop. It opens it up back in Illustrator. So from here, I can, you know, make the changes that I want to change, uh, do what I need to do. In this case, I'll just kind of give it a, um, a stroke just to change this in a way and then i'll even change that color to white for the text and there's that there's my new logo karen easy way to center assets in photoshop yeah let's talk about that right now so boom there i am notice how it's linked it's always going to be updated okay so when it comes to um, centering objects, right? I really don't know where the center is, but if I drag this around, you should see um, the smart guides pop up. See how I move this? Those are smart guides. So I can get this kind of right in the center, right there somewhere, right? And again, just make sure that's turned on if you go to view go down to show smart guides and that's when you'll get the uh the guides and the ability to kind of center within a page another trick oh here's another one for you again where i'm here to answer questions check this out uh going to view let's go into new guide layout if you want to find the exact center of a page go to new guide layout because i don't like doing math i can say hey you know what give me turn off the margins but give me two columns with no gutter, and that's the exact center. Give me two rows with no gutter, and that gives me that perfect center. So use new guide layout to find the, <clears throat> the center of an image, right? There's my logo. What's cool about this, as you know, Rob, right? Uh, as you know, Rob, you know, scaling this up, this is the power of it, is the fact that I could scale this up and say, hey, you know what? I want this to be larger like this, and there's no loss of quality, right? Because this is a smart object, right? But I'm gonna do you one better than that, okay? All right, Karen and Daryl and Ryan, let me do you one better for this, okay? So paste in the center is kind of a different story. Actually, let me just see if I can, I'm not, I'm not even sure if I just do a command V. It's just gonna paint, paste it on your, on your, in your document. So it doesn't do a paste in center when you bring it in. So you kind of got to find the center yourself. Hopefully that's okay, Ilchin. All right, so here it is. Let me do you one better, guys. Let's check this out. 
deleting that. I'm gonna paste this in again, that same logo, I'm pasting it in. You ready for this? I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? Actually, let me undo this. Let's just hide that. Pasting it in, and this time I'm gonna add it to my current library as a smart object. Clicking OK, right? And again, remember, I'm just pasting this in, uh, and look at the difference in these icons. Right? If you've ever come across this, this is, this is saying, hey, I'm a smart object, and this is technically saying I'm a, a CC library library item. Right? So here's a smart object, CC library item. Super smart. Right? Let's just type that in there. Because what did it do? It put it in my library panel. If I take a look, CC libraries right here, zoop, that's where it put my logo. The cool thing is, is I'm going to start squaring this away. Um, so yeah, Ilchin, there's no shortcut for pasting in the center. I wish there was. But let me get this squared away, because what's going to happen is you're going to start to bring in all of your assets, you know, say from Illustrator into Photoshop different ways, like these patterns, for instance. You know, taking this pattern right here. How about this one? Copying it you know, and pasting it in. We'll watch it do its thing. Mm, I know why that worked. I need to fix that. Let's grab a different asset. Mm, let's grab something else. Let's go to our logo elements because I actually might want to use a different logo element because I think mine's kind of lame. But taking ungroup, taking this asset right here, okay? Again, just another vector asset, pasting it in as a smart object, clicking OK, and you know, obviously there it is. I'm gonna to start to composite this. Okay, so what did it do? It also put it right over here, right? And Rob, as you know, right, you would start to clean this up, right? Because I'd actually want to uh, create a new library, and let's call it Paul's Branding, right? This is all my stuff for my, my branding for my company or whatever this is the new library that I want. So typically what you want to do is you want to have all of those assets in a fancy separate Paul's branding library. So I'm just kind of moving those over, right? But here I have Paul's branding and here I have the logo and here I have the frame like that, okay? Ooh, you're the man. Great questions, Stanislav. If you paste in a smart object and change the directory of the Illustrator file, will the smart object work? Yes, it, it will. So, so basically, I'm using library items. In fact, I'll show you right now. Right? I'll show you where that... I could show you where that becomes an issue. But let me open this one up, this one up for instance. And let's just change the color. Right? So let's say I have this one. Watch what happens if I... This is saved to my desktop as Logo AI. I'll paste it in, right, as my smart object, just like that, right? So here is this one. And what you're noticing is I have this particular file, okay? Now, what you wanna do, and just to prove my point, I'll just save this as cover. What you're saying is if you get rid of this file, right? Remember, all I did is paste it in. I didn't paste it in as a library item. But let's remove that and let's actually make sure it's closed over here. Because this is what you do. You're like, okay, just throw it away, right? You moved it or did something else with it, right? You come back over here. If I double click on it, notice that it'll still open it because it's actually not linked back to that file. The only way it's going to be linked is if you do a file place linked, right? That's the only way it's gonna have that, rel that actually I think it's a, rel it might be a relative path actually. I'm pretty sure it is a relative path to that linked file. This is the way we used to do things. You don't need to do things this way anymore, right? Because the great thing is, everything's linked back to this logo file. So I can double click on it and I can open it up and I can, again, change the color to something hopefully prettier. <laughs> Saving that again, just uh, as a, uh, <laughs> everybody's, is everybody silently judging my colors? Cause I certainly am. 
All right, so changing this asset, right? Going back over here, right? Wait for it. Oh, I'm glad this happened too, by the way. It actually updates that library item. I'm pointing out right now, check this out, and I'm glad this happened. You ready for this, Stanislav and Bella? Check this out. This is what you sometimes get. It says, hey, you know what? I'm actually not, I haven't updated yet. And this is really cool because it, a change might have happened someplace else and you don't want to open up your PSD and have everything changed. You're like, who messed with my stuff, right? So that's giving you control is what that does. So if I right click, I can say update all modified content, okay? And you can see it will update. So that little flag is always a good thing, okay? Does that make sense? Let's drop in some more. I really got to get some fun pictures in here. I'm going to lose my mind. And look at all these projects that I've been working on. Look at all this stuff. Ah, beautiful. I'm dropping in an image really fast. Again, it's all part of this design. I needed something a little bit more entertaining and fun to look at. Because, hey, you know what? We're designers. I swear, like, bad design, even if it's for a demo, just really bothers me. Okay, so that's what I want. Something kind of like that. I can drop that in. That could be right at the top. Okay. And I'm going to change this. And, again, I can change this a number of ways. All I have to do is double-click on it. Come in here. Of course, change the color to something else. Saving it back. Right? As I go back in here, you can see that it's changed. Okay. Yeah, undo is going to roll it back. In fact, it's actually going to break that link. And I'm glad you mentioned that. You are good. Oh, Sean. Seanus, slow down. <laughs> I do like seals. I actually saw there's actually a seal, a photograph of a seal in my miscellaneous folder. <laughs> but also this seal, as it looks like. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Transilian, great point. What if you hit undo? It rolls it back, but it's also saying, hey, you know what? I'm no longer in sync with the one that has changed, right? So that's another time that that pops up. And the good thing, guys, John and Seanus and everybody, the cool thing is that this is being recorded. You could always step back and do all that stuff. So again, update, uh, modified content. You can see it change, okay? Now, why is this in Photoshop now? Well, I personally like to do some things that are like a little more fun, like starting to change with, change the layer modes, for instance. And I'll just use some shortcut keys to kind of toggle through and see if we get anything interesting uh, for this case right here. I'm not saying I'm getting anything interesting. I'm saying I can. <laughs> All right, I kind of like that, right? That's cool. And for this frame, I might do something like this just to make it a little more fun. Let's use quick selection tool. Duplicate this, mask it out. Okay, let's invert that mask. Again, this isn't really a Photoshop tutorial. I'm just trying to do something fun and put that border kind of behind the mountain there. And that's kind of a cool look that I like. Cool. This is my des I just realized that these are my, uh, these are, this is my designer face is like this, like cock my head to the left and start toggling through. You're asking what the shortcut keys are that I'm using. I'm toggling through the, uh, layer modes using shift plus and minus. Okay. So shift plus and minus will do it. It's different on PC. I actually, I think it's the arrow keys. It's like shift up and down arrow, I think. Um, and then what you could do, you could do shift command O. Wait, shift option O. Shift control O, help me. Oh, I didn't have it selected. Shift option O will give you overlay. Shift option M 
for that, uh, again, whatever layer mode you're talking about, and you'll jump directly to it. Because I use multiply a lot, and I use overlay a lot. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I can kind of get something that I like or not. And again, I'm working with both Photoshop and Illustrator to create something kind of interesting in the hopes that you guys, you know, will hopefully be impressed. Because I'd say it still needs work, right? There we go. That looks pretty good. Ooh, could put a cloud in front of it on the top. Uh, and that's fantastic. Okay, again, just so you guys know, this is not necessarily a Photoshop tutorial. This is about working with uh, both Photoshop and Illustrator together. Okay, so that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, and what did I do? I did a lot of copying and pasting. If I do that some more, and keep in mind, guys, this is what I'll sometimes do is I'll grab assets from Creative Cloud libraries. Oh, excuse me, from Adobe Stock. I apologize. Here's, again, my libraries panel. Here's where my assets currently live, right? And I'm like, I need more assets. I can search Adobe Stock directly from within Photoshop. And I could do the same thing directly from within Illustrator, okay? So still using that same panel, Adobe Stock, right? Because I'm thinking right now what I'd like is I would like some icons. And I'm, I'm pointing this out because this is huge. Watch. Look at this. Okay, so for one, for one Adobe Stock credit, I get 784 solid universal icons. That's insane. I can't think of a world where I'd need that many. Right? But they're all here. Ooh, I loved lined icons, by the way. Look at that. Ah. <sighs> It's too much. It's almost too much. The cool thing is, is I already know that I have purchased some, so I can search all my current libraries for icons. And you can see I have 320 high quality is the one that I purchased. And then there's even this one. Let's grab, let's just open this one up. Right, so again, I got this from Adobe Stock. I licensed it, and now it's good to go, and I can grab this rainbow, for instance. The cool thing is, is I could start to use this and have this as part of my assets. So still, working between Illustrator and Photoshop, I take this asset, I drop it right into my library. I'm not sure why that won't go away. <laughs> uh, anyways, so there's the icon right there, okay? So that's what I'd start to do, is start to build out my library of assets, in this case, for uh, everything that I want to work on. The cool thing is, is as I work on this stuff, if this becomes... Ooh, I actually changed the wrong one. Let's open up this bad boy. Um, if I want to even save these colors, if I'm in Illustrator, working between Illustrator and Photoshop, I can say, hey, you know what? Save this fill color, right? Added right there. Let's take this nice uh, yellow and add that as well. Cool. Even this font, by the way, this is going to be my signature font. I know everybody's like bored to tears by it. I get it. Again, adding that as a character style to my library, right? So that's how I start to build out branding assets for the project that I'm working on. Now I can easily jump into any anywhere I want. I can jump back into um, Photoshop and still have access to those assets. Uh, cool, thank you guys for answering all those questions. You guys got it. I have these assets. Again, you guys get the idea, dropping them in. The cool thing is, is they're all linked back to um, good old uh, Illustrator, because technically they're vector, okay? 
I feel like I show this example like way too much, but I really, I think it really drives home the point of what can be done. So let me show you this, just to kind of really drive home the point. Um, essentially, I have this skull. You guys haven't seen this. I think it's kind of mind blowing. Yeah, exactly, Brent. You can save colors, by the way. You can obviously save character styles, like uh, whatever fonts that you've used can get saved. And the cool thing is, again, before I switched gears, as I start to work on this, as I build out this library, it's not just for me. It's for anyone I want to share it with. Okay, so I can say, hey, you know what? Let's share this link. Right? It opens up in a browser window. And now, wait for it. I can actually share this with you guys if, if I want to, and I will, right? So this is cool, it says, hey, you know what? Let's allow you guys to follow it. I don't really like that word follow, but essentially what it means is it means this Creative Cloud library is gonna be synced back to mine. So as I update my logo, you're gonna have your latest logo. The thing is you can't change it, right? So Paul's cool, Paul's demo. Paul's demo, right? So there it is. It's this link. I'll save that, right? Checking out this link right here. This is it. Paul's branding. Here's the here's the description that I've just added. And by the way, this URL I can send to you guys. So I'm going to post that in the chat. CC library. Paul's Paul's CC library, boom, there it is, right? Oh, Jason Levin, Jason Levine, buddy, good to see you. Uh, so he's here as well. So if I wanna even collaborate with him, cause he might be doing the, the on-air or the video graphics, well, I can actually collaborate with him, all right? So that means he could change this content, he can add to it and all that fun stuff, cause hey, I trust the guy, right? So right down here, Jason at adobe.com. I'm actually not saying that that's his email, because <laughs> it's not but uh <laughs> whoever he is he just got an invite <laughs> whoever jason at adobe is can now edit that content and it's not you jason but <laughs> they can now cool guys been going for about 30 minutes now hopefully that makes sense what you start doing you start building out a library again starting from say illustrator right creating your own graphics using the built-in templates, right? So I was using these templates as, as I showed you earlier, right? So file new, that's where you'll find those. And then also using Adobe Stock, which is where I got, uh, what, 320 icons and starting to build out that library, okay? I don't know if there's anything else here that I want to use. I could do America, but I'm not. Right, so again, just case in point, dropping that in here. Forgive the illustration, because I don't think that one's very good, okay? Yeah, I know that's not you, Jason. <laughs> I think it's funny, though. <laughs> Uh, but it's cool that if I did share it with Jason, if we were a little more coordinated, I should have told him earlier, but, uh, you know, he could add to that as well. But the cool thing is, is as you guys click on that link above, you'll see this little guy at a podium uh, actually appear. And uh, from there, I can actually even start to do, again, just some more things. So let's wait one second. <sighs> try to do something uh, something cool somebody was like hey make something cool so I'm inspired to use you know use uh, illustrator I said that's fine let's make this a circle Zoop. actually I'll do this I could do this guys I could show you this it's like hey you know what I could use the shaper tool Cause what do I want to draw? I want to draw like a 
square and a triangle and a circle. Because what I want to do now is make a map icon. So again, I'm still using, oops, I'm still using the same tool. All right, so just using this one tool to rule them all, if you will. I'm combining these graphics together. Let's scribble, and that will combine those two together. Notice how I didn't get it exactly right, right? Well, hey, double clicking inside, and now I can start to adjust that and tweak it the way I want to get that lined up perfectly, okay? Technically, I'm using my arrow keys right now. Okay, but there's like my map icon. I wanna add, uh, again, still using the shaper tool, adding a circle right there, moving it over, right? Scribbling it out, by the way, I don't want, oh, I don't want that inside, so I'm just scribbling that out, and there's my map icon, okay? Now I can take this asset, let's increase the stroke, maybe ba 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 right? Really easy, dropping that into my library item, and now I have a map icon, right? And still available to use everywhere. So what do I do? It's available right here, dropping that in as part of this project, saying, hey, you know what? I'm right down here. I happen to be speaking right down here uh, to just uh, pretty much a bunch of birds and wildlife. Okay, cool. So Transilian, what is this magic? This magic is Photoshop and Photoshop and Illustrator working together. Okay, just to reiterate, guys, it's a matter of making graphics again, impressing you maybe with the Shaper tool creating what I want, bringing it into a Creative Cloud library. Ooh, hello. Let's delete that one. Let's ungroup, so I just have this one asset. But taking this one asset, dropping it into my Creative Cloud library, right? Going into Photoshop, oh, guess what? My asset is right there, and now I can bring it in, and that's how you work between uh, you know Photoshop and Illustrator effectively. Cool? Uh, Christening, you're asking, is this the same old, old fashioned compound path? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not really actually, but it could be related to that. Okay, getting back to the skull, right? So so let's take this to the next level. Everything is linked, right? Everything is linked back to uh, Illustrator, which effectively makes all of these assets sort of almost resolution independent, but we're in Photoshop. So that's what I did for the skull, okay? So to shift gears, here I have this skull, and this skull, all it is is it's a my library. Let me find that library. Here's a bunch of assets, right? So I've actually, uh, ha these are originally from Illustrator, right? I brought them into Photoshop. In fact, if I double click on it, you could see I've opened this up. So here's the original dog rose, okay? And what did I do? I just synced it to my Creative Cloud library right here. And then I really used the power of Photoshop to do what it can do and cr to create, you know, again, this sort of magic. So effectively what you have here, what seems like would be a raster image, just a bunch of pixels, really isn't because everything is related back to those vector assets. Okay, so this is resolution independent. There I said it. Right? So again, I hope you guys are impressed with that. I'm impressed with that. The fact that I can use the power of Photoshop but still have all these graphics as a vector. I think it's pretty awesome. So, hey Carol, are you making a pun? You're dying, you were dying for a minute and this is a skull. Did you just make a pun? <laughs> oh, jokes. All right, so I hope that sums it up. I've gone for, well, actually technically 38 minutes. I want to make sure I answer any of your guys' questions. I have not done a Shaper Tool video. I I plan on it. It's on the, my list of things to do. Because uh, the Shaper Tool is probably like, 
It's the most it's the most impressive to show. To be honest with you. Right? Super impressive to show cuz what is typically, you know, seemingly innocent like just a bunch of shapes quickly becomes something awesome with the shaper tool, right? You get the idea. Everything is made up of basic shapes, right? Just like this is. So that's what I'm doing now is just erasing parts of this, right? And there's, again, just my fish, roughly, right? You get the idea. Cool. All done with the shaper tool, just like I was doing before dropping it into my branding folder that's i'm collaborating with jason on and that's everywhere it's even in after effects and premiere pro okay one more question uh thank you so much john honestly i just really appreciate any good positive feedback <laughs> um but anyways that's all done with the shaper tool just to undo i'm just hitting undo z z z z z those are all the lines that i removed thanks to the shaper tool, and that was my original shape. Okay, lastly, since you asked Alexander, once I'm done with this asset, and I'm not even saying it's that pretty, it still needs some work, but I can save this to my Creative Cloud Files folder, and I'll call this new folder Paul's Branding, right? There's my new folder, it's inside of Creative Cloud Files. Okay, so, what I can do from there is save it to that same folder. It's kind of messy. To anybody that I send it to. So this is one way to share an entire folder. How do you do that? I'm kind of waiting for it to sync. Let's do it with this at with this folder for instance. Uh, let's let's collaborate on this folder any folder. It's gonna ha it's gonna do the same thing instead of collaborating with a library I'm actually collaborating with a folder uh, and someone else and uh, That's how you can share a PSD if you want to or excuse me even more than that, but just a whole folder, right? Cool uh, You have 20 gigs in the CC file uh, for CC files so, did I say assist? I probably, I probably missed.